code here, we are dealing with cross codes, no mm -hmm. mean nothing. Correct. Just simple data. Yes. Now instead of simple data, what we are doing is we are drawing a whole bunch of samples from the same population. In this example, I have given you like 10 samples drawn from the same population. Then for each sample, we calculated the mean age. And that is the data we have here. So that's our data. Instead of raw data, now we have a distribution of mean age. That's our data. That's the basic difference between these two things we have been dealing with. So instead of, since we are using with, dealing with raw data, we were writing it as X and just sigma. And we are moving away from that to sample means. For a specific sample mean, because mean, we are using it as M. And then we are dealing with this sample distribution. And the main idea of this theory is when you are drawing 10 different samples from the same population, you know for sure that none of these sample means is going to be exactly as equal to the population mean. Think about it. If we have 40 people in this class and I create four samples of 10 people from the same class and I do a calculation of sample mean of age, it will vary from one sample to another sample, right? So what they are saying here, theoretically speaking, again, practically speaking, we never do this kind of thing. Theoretically speaking, the assumption is if you draw about like 10, 12, 15 samples from the same population and then you calculate the mean of something, age or let's say education, uh, GMAT score, GRD score, all those things, it has to be a continuous variable, not a categorical variable. So when you draw these sample means and then you write them down and the more people you have in each sample, the chances are this distribution will fall in a normal, under a normal curve. With that assumption, we are going with this, this one. So when we get a question.